So, so far, what have we done? We have defined the notion of perfect secrecy. So far. Defined perfect secrecy. Defined perfect secrecy. Uh, proved that one time pal achieves it. Proved one time pad achieves it. C H I E V achieves it. Um, showed that one time pad is optimal using Shannon's theorem. Showed one time pad is optimal. Uh, in terms of we cannot improve its key length, i.e., i.e., we cannot improve upon the key length, the key length, okay, and show some other uh, drawbacks of perfect secrecy showed other drawbacks of perfect secrecy C -R -E -C -R -E -C okay now the question is um we want to do better somehow right um so how do we do better if we want to do better if we want to do better we need to relax the definition we need to relax the definition okay now the question is how do we relax the definition question which definition to relax which definition to relax and how okay because um well can we relax that information how do we relax that the change of uh, the perfect secrecy definition that observing what was it called observing ciphertext should not change the out uh, change the probabilities of the message space that's hard to relax right so what was our orig uh, original definition perfect secrecy perfect secrecy is Perfect secrecy um, requires that requires that absolutely no information that absolutely no information information about the plain text is leaked about the plain text is leaked. Uh, even to eavesdropper with unlimited computational power. Even to eavesdroppers with unlimited computational power. Computational power okay and this is great and all but the problem is it's unreasonably strong it's unnecessarily really strong okay for all practical purposes if it's okay if 
some really small amount of uh, information was leaked at a tiny probability to eavesdropper who have been working really, really hard, who have bounded computational resources. Okay, so computational secrecy, computational secrecy, Okay, would it be okay, would it be okay if a scheme, if a scheme leaked information to, with tiny probability, with tiny probability, probability, to eavesdroppers, a eavesdroppers with bounded computational resources, with bounded computational resources. Okay, what does this mean? This means that, well, not everyone can, no one can try all the keys at the same time, right? They can't instantly figure out all the keys and try it out everything. They're going to uh, take time to go through all the keys. During this time, how, what is the probability that they should be able to break it in within a certain time, okay? I.e., first, we relax perfect secrecy. We can relax perfect secrecy. Can, we can relax perfect secrecy by First, allowing security to fail with tiny probability, allowing security to fail with tiny probability. Uh, and when I say tiny probability, it means probability which is small enough that it shouldn't matter. For all practical purposes, it's never failing. Okay? And restricting attention only to efficient attackers. To efficient attackers. As in someone which is actually uh, someone which is actually possible to attack rather than just hypothetical someone who's like okay i am going to process every single key instantly and figure it out no so what does it mean by tiny probability of failure tiny probability of failure A -I -O. Failure is something to the order of, say, probability fails, say, probability fails in with, uh, sorry, with, say, security fails, not probability fails, say, security fails, as ECUR, security fails with <coughs> probability probability 2 to the minus 60 okay suppose i am going to say probability fails with um sorry security fails with probability 2 to the minus 60 then is this concerning then Then, is this concerning? Concerning. Okay, how bad is this? Okay, 
<coughs> so, just as an example of how bad this is, is the probability of both the sender and the eavesdropper and the receiver, so being struck by lightning at the same time and dying is more than 2 to the minus 60. Okay, so something that occurs once in a hundred years, something that occurs once in a hundred years has probability probability 2 to the minus 30. 2 to the minus 60 is once in a billion years. Once in 100 billion years. 100 billion years. So, if the failure, a probability of my failure is 2 to the minus 60 uh, seconds, then, yeah, it is, my security system is going to fail once in 100 billion years. I think that is okay. I think the probability of that is happening or someone being able to do that is, like, extremely lucky. There's almost no chance it is happening. It's okay. <laughs> Even if the population of the entire world simultaneously tries, they would still take over a hundred days uh, once a day. It would still take them over a hundred days to crack it. Right. So this is the tiny probability of failure. What does it mean by bounded attacker? So the other condition we had was restricting to efficient attackers. So what is efficient attackers? Efficient attacker. So, <clears throat> um, let us consider what brute force does. So, consider brute force, brute force, search for key space, search of key space, of key space. Okay. And assume one key can be tested per clock cycle. Assume one key <coughs> tested every clock cycle. Okay. So what is clock cycle? That is basically the frequency of your computers, your laptops, your desktops, whatever. A standard desktop computer, desktop computer, has about 2 to the 60-ish keys per year. Keys per year. Okay. It runs about 2 to the 60 cycles per year. Even at its megahertz, gigahertz uh, computational speed, it's going to uh, do about 2 to the 60. A supercomputer, which has insanely more computational power, calculates about 2 to the 80 keys per year. Okay. <clears throat> that means a supercomputer who has been working since time beginning, like since Big Bang, supercomputer uh, working since Big Bang, working since Big Bang, has calculated about, uh, we can assume that Big Bang happened about 2 to the 32 years ago. And so this is 2 to the 112 keys. Okay. And so if my key space is um, more than 2 to the 112 keys, I think we can say it should take them a fair bit of time. 
So restricting ourselves, restricting to keep uh, uh, restricting attention, attention to attackers, attackers who can compute. Who can try two to the one one two keys? That's fine, right? Just for reference, modern key spaces, modern key spaces, key space are about two to the one twenty eight keys or more, keys or more. Okay. Today's encryption system generally uses 2 to the 128 keys or more. So even if a supercomputer is working from Big Bang to now continuously trying out these keys, um, we will still have not tried out all of those keys. Okay. <clears throat> so now we want to relax the definition. So how do we relax the definition? How and which definition to relax? Uh, the definition we would like to relax is that of perfect indistinguishability. Best definition to relax. Best definition to relax. Since we are dealing with probabilities, it is going to be perfect indistinguishability. Perfect in distinguishability. <coughs> okay. So how do we relax it? How? Um, what was perfect in distinguishability? Uh, just a refresher. Um, I a system is perfectly indistinguishable, is perfectly indistinguishable if for all attackers A, if for all attackers A, <coughs> we saw that the mm, probability of the private key algorithm a pi is equal to 1 is exactly 1 half. Neither more nor less. Okay. Now the question was how to relax it. How to relax it. How to relax it. Okay. There are two approaches. Two approaches. Two approaches. First is called the con uh, the concrete security. Concrete security. And the second is called asymptotic security. A double S A S Y M P T O T Security. Okay, <coughs> so let us look at first the concrete security example. Okay, computational security, uh, sorry, computational indistinguishability in this. Distinguishability concrete. Okay. What is concrete in distinguishability? It is also generally referred to as, also written as T epsilon in distinguishability. In distinguishability. Okay, so what is the T epsilon indistinguishability? Well, you're allowed to have your security fail with probability less than or equal to epsilon. 
SECU. Security can fail, may fail with probability. Probability smaller than or equal to epsilon and restrict attention to attackers attention to attackers attackers running in time running in time <coughs> smaller than or equal to t seconds okay then we say pi is pi is t epsilon t epsilon indistinguishable d i s t i n t i n g s i should really find a way to write indistinguishable in a small way indistinguishable if for all attackers a for all attackers a running in time running so this is your definition running in time t time at most t most t it holds that it holds that the probability of the experiment success Rev a pi is equal to at most one. That's right, is one is at most half plus an epsilon. Okay, so the chance that they are going to succeed is more than half by at most an epsilon. Okay, and why is this a good definition? Why is this relevant? That is because, well, the parameters t and epsilon, parameters t, epsilon, are the ones that we ultimately care about in the real world. Are the ones we ultimately care about in real world. Okay, however, there are some problems, okay, problems does not lead to a clean theory, so problems, problems does not lead to a clean theory, does not lead to a clean theory. What does that mean? Well, first of all, uh, it depends on what computational model we are using. Sensitive to exact computational model. And the same Pi can be t epsilon secure. Pi can be t epsilon secure for many choices of t and epsilon. For many <coughs> choices of t comma epsilon. Which might sound great that you're like, okay, for running this much time, this is, um, uh, sorry. If I'm running for 200 years, it is, uh, my probability of success is 2 to the minus 20. But what if I run for 250 years? I don't want my probability of success to suddenly fall from 2 to the minus 20 to, let's say, 1. Right? I don't want that happening. So, I would like a scheme where... Mm. Sorry about that. So we would like a scheme where we can adjust uh, how much 
security we want would like a scheme like to have a scheme have a scheme where users can where users can adjust the achieved security as desired achieved security as desired okay so we should be able to say okay i want my system to be secure this much for these many years okay and that brings this the idea of asymptotic security okay asymptotic security as y m p t a t security what is that asymptotic security so now instead of t epsilon we introduce a security parameter n introduce a security parameter c u security parameter n parameter n okay so security parameter can be a lot of things um later on we'll see about in the details but for now let us just assume that it's the length of the key so for now assume it's the length of the key uh, view as length of the key view as the key length okay <clears throat> so what is this parameter well the parties that are sending the message um between each other um they fixed this parameter so fixed by all next parties fixed by honest parties at initialization at initialization okay initialization and uh, this is what allows the people to allows uh, users to tailor security allows users to tailor security uh, level tailor the security level secure see your security level as desired so you have to fix it when you start the algorithm but you can always choose it even midway through the algorithm it doesn't have to be chosen at the start uh, like it's not fixed okay and it is okay if it is known by the adversary okay if known to the adversary okay the security parameter it's okay to say it is known by the adversary okay what do we do with the security parameter well we measure the running times of all parties measure the running time of all parties running time of all parties and the success probability and the success probability <coughs> probability of the adversary of the adversary all in terms of x as a function of n okay so rather than t and epsilon um we want everything in terms of n and so what is computational indistinguishability in terms of um asymptotic security so computational 
rotational uh, indistinguishability in this distinguishability asymptotic this one asymptotic what does this say oh, what a horrible line this says um well i am allowing the security to fail for a probability negligible in n security c u security may fail may fail with probability negligible in n with probability <coughs> negligible in n and restrict attention to attackers in running time restrict attention to attackers in running time in running time at most polynomial in n at most polynomial in n Okay, what does it mean by at most polynomial time in N? It means that um, the running time should be a polynomial of N. Okay, or more precisely, definition. <coughs> a function F, a function F from z plus to or let's just say n from naturals to the integers is at most polynomial polynomial if there exists a c if there exists so a C C belonging to R such that F of N is smaller than N to the C for large enough N for large enough N i.e. for every n greater than or equal to capital N. Okay. <coughs> so let me just n n, be n belonging to n such that this. Okay. So this is what it means by a function to be at most polynomial. And the other definition we have is what it means to be negligible in N. A function, a function F, again from naturals to this time, actually zero, one, is negligible, negligible if for every polynomial p if for every polynomial p it holds <coughs> that f of n is strictly smaller than one over p of n for large enough n okay 
So, for example, example, uh, two to the minus n, two to the minus root n, and for example, n to the minus log n are all negligible, are all negligible functions, functions. However, all of them have different rates of decay. However, however, they all have different rates of decay. Okay, so for example, two to the minus n is smaller than n to the minus five for every n greater than 5 log n, log n, okay, which is to say, <coughs> i.e., for every n greater than 23, okay, that's pretty easy, after 23 it all holds, right, compared to that, 2 to the minus root n, is smaller than n to the minus 5 for every n greater than 3550. 3500. Okay. Well, approximately for every n greater than approximately 3550. Okay. Not exactly 3550, it's around 3550. And n to the minus log n smaller than n to the minus 5 for every n greater than, well, 35. 33. Okay, so those are all negligible functions. <coughs> and what is so great about these? Why are we choosing um, this definition of negligible and polynomial time, uh, even though they seem somewhat arbitrary? Okay, uh, why, why these definitions? Why these definitions. Well, the important thing is these are efficient. E double F I C. What does it mean? Um, they actually operate on probabilistic probabilistic polynomial time. Polynomial Time, which is something that is borrowed from complexity theory. Borrowed from complexity theory. Okay, about how um, long it takes and everything. How long an algorithm, how complex an algorithm is and everything and convenient closure properties. And the fact that uh, polynomial time times polynomial time is still actually polynomial. Okay. <coughs> so which is to say polynomial many calls, polynomial many calls, many calls to a PPT subroutine to polynomial probabilistic polynomial time uh, subroutine subroutine with polynomial size inputs poly size inputs is all still PPT is still PPT Okay, uh, if you're do if you are from a computer science background, you might be familiar with uh, algorithms which are n peak complete or peak uh, or other things, and so the p there is all polynomial time. Okay, that's what it stands for. 
So if you have heard of P is equal to NP and other things, the P stands for polynomial and non-polynomial. Okay. And the other is that polynomial times negligible, polynomial, why am I denoting this this way? Polynomial multiplied by polynomial, polynomial multiplied by negligible is actually just negligible, right? Because of how I defined my thing, how I define negligible, even if I multiply a negligible thing by a polynomial, I am basically subtracting the power of the polynomial and I'm still getting something that should be negligible. <coughs> so, which is to say, poly many calls, many calls to subroutine, subroutine that fails with negligible negligible probability probability will still fail with uh, negligible probability overall will fail with <coughs> negligible probability <coughs> overall all efficient algorithms are going to be some kind of polynomial time things okay and even if you multiply them you are still going to be in polynomial time if you and their failure or success is still going to be negligible okay <coughs> and so this gives us the definition of uh, in, uh, computational indistinguishability asymptotic version computational in distinguishability <coughs> asymptotic version okay this time the entire algorithm <coughs> is very slightly modified okay so here's the, how the algorithm works fix your i and a as before okay they are not changing however um what you do is you get an your algorithm uh, you feed it to your algorithm generator a random uh, sorry what was it called again uniform string so just give me half a second right So here's how we define the experiment now. Define a randomized experiment, randomized experiment, uh, which again, we will denote prove a pi, however, with n as follows. Okay, first, <coughs> the key generation algorithm takes an input key generation <coughs> algorithm algorithm gen takes input 1 to the power n okay so basically you're feeding it some integer n <coughs> to tell it how long the key size should be and outputs <coughs> a key k a key k 
of length at least n. Okay. <coughs> now, our adversary uh, knows this key and knows this length n. Sorry, not this key. Hopefully, he does not know this key. Okay. Adversary. Adversary chooses. Actually, let us make it exactly n. Length n. <coughs> adversary. Adversary outputs. Uh, adversary chooses messages m1 and m2. Chooses messages M M zero M one of length N. Okay. Of length N. Okay. Oops. Then the encryption algorithm. Encryption uh, takes a key as input, takes takes input key K and a plain, a plain text message and message M message M to output ciphertext C. Ciphertext C. Okay. And now here's a very important thing. Till now we were dealing with um, a fixed encryption. Okay. Here the encryption may be randomized. <clears throat> B and C may be randomized. And so even if you feed it the same key and the same message, it might spit out a different encryption different times. And so rather than seeing C is equal to encryption, we are going to say this is equal to encryption of K of M. Okay. Oops. <clears throat> it takes the key K and message MB and it's outputting where B belongs to zero one is chosen arbitrarily. Okay. As before. And then uh, <clears throat> as before uh, B prime is our guess uh, a takes c as input and outputs m sorry message m b to output and outputs what was the same Outputs a guess B prime. Okay. We say adversary succeeds. Adversary succeeds. S U C C E E succeeds if B is equal to B prime and say evaluate and say experiment evaluates to one okay as before in this case great and so the definition of my <clears throat> security is in this case definition pi is computationally indistinguishable pi is computationally 
indistinguishable b i s i am not writing the full word i give up indistinguishable uh another way of saying this is e a v secure that is to say eavesdropper secure which is why e a v is there even though i have been dropping the e a v if for all probabilistic polynomial time attackers attackers a there is a negligible function epsilon there is a negligible function epsilon such that <clears throat> The probability of this experiment a pi given input n succeeding is smaller than or equal to one half plus epsilon of n. Okay, so <coughs> the probability should uh, probability should be extremely small and as a function of n okay so if you increase n epsilon n should get smaller and smaller so that if you want to increase your security you can increase n example <coughs> uh, so consider a scheme where the best case attack is brute force consider a scheme scheme where the best case attack, where the best case attack, best case attack is brute force. Uh, brute force search over the entire key space, over key space, and generator one n. Generates a uniform n bit key. Generates a uniform, uniform n bit key. N bit key. Okay. So example one. In this case, if so, if A runs in runs in time tn then the probability of success probability of the private encryption a pi of n succeeding should be smaller than one half plus o t of n over Two to the n. Okay. That is to say, this scheme is secure. This scheme is secure. Well, EAV secure. Eavesdropper secure. Secure. If for any polynomial time function, for any polynomial t, the function, the function t of n over two to the n is negligible. And this is true, right? T to the uh, T n over two to the n for any polynomial two is always negligible. You can uh, it it depends on your polynomial t, but this is always negligible. Hence, this scheme is always secure. Okay. Now, consider another example. Okay, rather than running in. Uh, a random polynomial tn uh, let us say consider a scheme 
consider a scheme <coughs> and a particular attacker A and oh, particular attacker A uh, that runs for that runs for a cube time. Oh, sorry, not a cube. N cube is the name. N cube time. Uh, N cube minutes. Minutes rather than seconds. Uh, N cube minutes and breaks the scheme with probability. And breaks the scheme with probability. With probability <clears throat> 2 to the 40 times 2 to the minus n. Okay. Well, great. Uh, this does not contradict uh, asymptotic security. This fits definition of asymptotic of asymptotic security oy, 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 oy. security okay because even though i don't have a function of polynomial, there is no polynomial of n. 2 to the 40 is a constant, and a constant is a polynomial. Okay? So I have a probability uh, 2 to the 40 times 2 to the minus n, and the polynomial time of running is 2 to the 40. Okay? Um, and so how would this uh, work in real world security? Uh, for n is equal to 40, a break scheme, a breaks scheme with probability 1 in 6 weeks. So if you put n is equal to 40, well, your scheme is getting broken perfectly guaranteed in 6 weeks. If a is equal to 50, this break scheme, scheme with probability uh, 1 over 1,000 in 3 months. Okay, so even this slight upgrade of n is equal to 50 is that secure. If you take n is equal to 500, then a breaks scheme with probability <coughs> about 2 to the minus 500 in 200 years. Okay, so it is extremely secure. Okay, now let us look at so the last time. Um, when we talked about concrete security, one of the problems was what happens if my computers get faster? My concrete security cannot tell me what happens if my uh, computer gets faster because um, I have no idea how fast things are getting, how my scheme is changing, how does T and Epsilon change with it. But asymptotic security deals with these. <coughs> Sorry. What happens when computers get faster? When computers get faster? Example. Uh, so this shouldn't be here. This is part of the example. Uh, example. Consider a scheme. Consider a scheme uh, that takes that takes 
n squared time to run time to run and in 2 to the n time it breaks with probably 1 but in time 2 to the n um, it breaks with probability 1 breaks with probability 1 okay maybe uh, you don't care super much if your um, code gets broken it's only short time and you're okay with it okay so now what happens if computers get four times faster what happens if computers are four times faster. Okay. Well, if the computers are four times faster, what you can do is honest users, honest users, double N, double N. Okay. They double the length which when you have, instead of n, you have 2n, 2n squared is 4n, 4n squared in terms of uh, running speed, uh, running time, it is conserved. Maintain same running time. Maintain same, uh, so, <clears throat> actually this should be this one. Honest users, and double n which does what uh maintain same running time maintain same running time same running time but the attacker's work is roughly squared attackers work is roughly squared now it's roughly because of course he is processing things faster but if you are squaring 10,000 or a billion even if you square it it's super big right the square of 2 uh, square of 2 to the 4 is 2 to the uh, sorry okay let's say square of a thousand is 10 million, if I'm correct. Okay. And so your work grew from 1,000 to 10 million, whereas your speed only increased by four times. Okay. And so things got much more complicated for the attacker. Okay. <coughs> so uh, we'll stop. After, uh, we'll stop here and we'll talk about some more uh, ideas about how a computational encryption and all these computational secrecy works next time, uh, next week. And uh, this one stops here.